that's bright. What's up? So I don't even know what this phone is called because as I was researching it, I found a plethora of different names. So in effort to reduce confusion regarding this nameless phone, I'm gonna make sure to hit all the names that I've seen as well as ones that I see fitting for the iPhone SE Mark II. Two things. First thing is that this is not a tech focused video. This is just a comparison between these two cameras. If you're trying to get more techy specky, go to your YouTube search bar and type in MKBHD. That being said, I'm not too techy specky myself. Even when it comes to cameras, I don't look at that a ton. However, I know some of you might be interested in that. So I'll copy and paste the info about each camera here and here. We'll get going after that. All right, let's begin. So just like you, I have been cooped up in my house for what feels like a year now, and I decided to take a little quarantine cruise today. Go out to the woods, shoot a little photos with both these phones, the iPhone 11 Pro and the iPhone SE Mark II. of the trails here in Washington are still closed. So we're just doing a lot of by the road shots today. Luckily, Washington has ample views all around, so I'm not even complaining. Oh, look at these guys. Now, the one real bummer part about the iPhone SE Mark II 2020 Vision, it only has one lens on it, so it doesn't have a zoom lens like the iPhone 11 Pro, that little guy right there. So what that means is when you zoom, you have to do it digitally, and that's going to give you a lesser quality than what you would do if you were zooming in with a lens. So one way to combat that is with a moment lens. Oh, lit. I 100% did not bring my zoom lens, but I will just blast back to the studio and show you exactly that. Wow, I really blew that one. So, I found my lens here. If you want a zoomy on your SE. Pretty neat. Little moment macro action. Our macro lens allows you to get real close on small details of small things and photograph your little ant friends. So one thing I'm noticing between the two is that I like looking at the pictures on the iPhone SE 2020 Vision a bit better than I like looking at them on the 11 Pro. So I'll have to look at all these pictures on the same screen later and compare and contrast. So I've had time to look at the images between the two phones, the 11 Pro and whatever this one's called. And I have a few things to say. Another thing to note is that both these standard lenses on each phone, so the 11 Pro standard lens and the only lens on the 2020 iPhone SE Reprise Edition, they're the exact same. However, I notice a bit of a difference with each one as I've been shooting with them. Let's have a look. Let's look at this rafting example first. Two main parts of this photo I want to highlight are the clouds and the water highlights. Here's the 11 Pro one, and if you look at the water, it's pretty consistent exposure across the entirety of it. And if you look at the clouds, there's some detail there, but there's not a ton. And now here is the SE2. I'm just going to call it SE2 for now. There's a lot more detail in the clouds and also that water. I'll just go back and forth here real quick. Look at the highlights there near the shore. That's the 11 Pro. That's the SE2. That water just feels a bit more brighter. It feels a bit more lively. I'm kinda keen on that. Let's throw up a video example. I want you to focus on the white water here as I switch it to the SE. And I'm gonna switch it three, two, one. Boom. 
When I'm looking at this, I'm seeing quite a big difference in contrast between the white water and the not white water. Whereas I'll switch back to the 11 Pro footage here, it's a lot more flatter. However, in certain instances, it doesn't really make a huge difference between the phones like when I was taking photos of those ants. There's not really a huge contrast or color difference between those two phones on that photo, but the one I noticed the biggest difference in is this next one right here. The 11 Pro has a lot more detail in the clouds in this instance, and you can also see the mountains feel a bit more distant there, a bit more faded out, versus the SE where they're a lot more contrasted and colored. However, it definitely feels significantly more flatter, way less contrast in the 11 Pro photo. Here's one other landscape photo to showcase pretty much the same thing. Here's the 11 Pro, and notice that background just feels a lot more diffused and weathery and a bit more faded out. And if you look at the SE2 photo, it feels a bit more warmer, a bit less faded out, and a bit more contrast throughout the whole image. That's one of the main differences I noticed between the two cameras. Very consistently, the SE2 was a lot more contrasted and quite a bit warmer than the 11 Pro, where the 11 Pro was a lot less contrasted, and usually on the cooler side, as well as those very big distancey shots, seem to be a lot more faded out in the distance. I don't know if AI is playing into that to create that effect, but just an observation. So it looks like the weather is turning a bit for the worse. I'm gonna drive back to where I live and see if the weather's a bit better there and shoot a little bit around my city. If not, Sucks to suck. Sick truck. So as you can see, it's very much raining here. I actually don't know if you can see, but. You guys silly? I'm still gonna send it. <laughs> So my final thoughts here might be more of an unpopular opinion, but I think I prefer this dude over the 11 Pro. The size is just smaller compared to the 11 Pro. The difference isn't huge, um, but you can definitely feel it when you have both of these in your hand. It's also quite a bit lighter than the 11 Pro, and I really, I didn't know how much I missed the home button until I had a home button. Voice crack. Having that home button feels so good to just press. It reads your thumbprint like the old days. I didn't know how much I missed it until I had it, so. And then there's the price. This new SE comes in at 400 bucks versus a thousand bucks for the 11 Pro. And if you buy the 11 Pro Max, the one that's bigger, it's 1100. And shameless plug aside, like both of these standard lenses are the same. So if you want the same capabilities as the 11 Pro. You can literally buy two moment lenses, the wide and the tele, along with the case. And I mean, you're spending about half the amount as the 11 Pro and getting the same amount of like photography specs as you would on the 11 Pro. There might be some deeper tech specs in there that I don't really know about that could argue against that. But at the end of the day, like you're saving like 500 bucks and getting the same same focal ranges, but also, and this is more of a bias standpoint, I really like the photos out of the SE2 so much more than I like from the 11 Pro. There, I said it, sue me. As I looked at them, they felt a bit warmer, which I'm very keen on, but they also, to me, just seemed a bit more natural than the 11 Pro. I feel like the 11 Pro is doing some magic AI stuff in there that makes them feel a bit more doctored than the new SE phone. And that's all personal preference, but I was really keen on what I saw from the SE Pro, SE Pro 2, that's not what it's called. Well, actually it might be, who knows? I don't even think Tim Cook knows what it's called. The photos just felt really natural from this little dude. And so between the 11 Pro and the iPhone SE 2020 Mark II, I'm feeling 22, 2020 Vision, sequel to the prequel second edition SE phone by Apple. This one has my vote. If you're offended by that, I'm really sorry. But that pretty much wraps up this video. If you guys have an SE2, 2020, whatever you want to call it, we have cases in the shop for them, as well as moment lenses that can make your wildest tele and wide angle dreams come true. You can check it out in our shop at shopmoment.com. And with that, our time has come to a close. Thanks for watching and see you some other time. People ask me all the time, Kearns, what's the best part about working for a moment?
Where do I begin? Is it the people? The people are great. They're a hardworking crew, and we get along very well. Is it the money? I get paid to do what I love, and my job is great for that reason. Do you think I do this for the money? <laughs> no way. I'm here for the phone reviews. Just like you, I always lose my earbuds, and if I don't lose them in time, they just go through the wash anyway. It's a lose-lose. And same thing with the charger. Like, you might think I'm just lazy to not go get up and charge my phone. Reality is I have no idea where it is. So every time we do a phone review, we get new phones. And what comes with new phones? Charger and some earbuds. So naturally, when I get the phones first, problem solved. 